Hey y'all, it's Miss Flores. So today we are going to be starting our new unit all about fractions, specifically adding and subtracting fractions. But in order to add and subtract fractions in fifth grade, we need to know how to find equivalent fractions. In fourth grade, y'all have been adding fractions with the same denominator, right? Like one half plus one half, one fourth plus two fourths, right? So this year we're going to be adding fractions with different denominators, but we need to know how to turn in how to turn those fractions into other fractions that have the same denominator, right? That's where equivalent fractions comes in. So just like what we talked about, when we add and subtract fractions, we need to make sure our fractions have a common denominator. Common denominator means that they have the same number in their denominators. But you might be thinking to yourself, how can you change the denominator of a fraction? So we're going to learn how to do that today. Let's take one half and we'll turn it into sixths for example. So when I'm thinking about turning one half into six, I need to think about what can I do to two to turn it into six? What can I do to two to turn it into six? Well, I know from math facts, right, that two times three is equal to six, right? That's true, but we're not dealing with just two, we're dealing with one half. So I can't just multiply that two by three to get to six, I need to multiply my numerator and my denominator by the same thing to get my new numerator. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing just 2 times 3, I'm going to do 1 times 3 as well to get my new numerator. When I'm doing this, I'm basically multiplying 1 half by 1, right? I'm basically multiplying 1 half by 1 because 3 thirds is equal to 1, right? Three thirds is equal to one. Three thirds is one whole, because if I were to draw three thirds, right? Here's a square, here's it split into thirds, right? Three thirds would be the whole thing, right? That is one whole, that is multiplying by one. So if I'm multiplying one half by one, it's going to say the same value, but by multiplying it by three thirds, it just breaks it up into smaller pieces. So like we just did, we did two times three to get to six. So now we'll do one times three to get our new numerator. 1 times 3 is 3, so my equivalent fraction would be 3 sixths. 1 half is equal to 3 sixths. And let's show you how that looks. So if you don't believe me that, that you know, these aren't equivalent, that they are different fractions entirely, right? Well, we have our 1 half and we're turning it into 3 sixths, right? 1 half is equal to 3 sixths. Well, let's color in 1 half. Here's my box. It is cut into halves. So one half would be one half of the box, right? It would be this, that amount. That is one half. Well, three sixths would be three out of six of these pieces, right? So if I have three sixths, that would be one, two, three. That would be this amount, right? That is the same, is it not? It is both, both of these are basically half of our box filled in, right? So that just shows you that one half is equal to three sixths. But the only way that we can get equivalent fractions is we have to make sure that we multiply our denominator and numerator by the same number. If we only multiply by one or we multiply by different numbers, it is not going to be equivalent. It will be a completely different fraction. So let's look at some examples before we get started on our assignment. We're going to do two more together. And then after that, you're going to pause, try it out on your own, and then play it with me. So let's look at one third and we're turning it into fifteenths. Well, if I've got one third and I'm trying to turn it into 15, right? I need to think about what did I do to three? What did I multiply three by to get it to be 15? Well, this is where knowing your math facts comes in handy, right? Because if we remember our math facts, I know that three times five, oop, got my eraser on, three times five, is equal to 15, right? But remember, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top, right? Because we're basically multiplying by one. Zero fifths is not one, five fifths is one. So I need to multiply my one, my numerator, also by five. Well, one times five is equal to five. So that means five fifteenths is equivalent to one third. Let's look at our next one. 
two thirds and it's going to become sixths. So I've got two thirds and it's becoming, oh, not two sixths, two thirds, my bad. And it's gonna become sixths. So remember, we have to think, how did I turn three into six? What did I multiply three by to turn it into six? Well, we know from math facts that three times two is equal to six. But remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do the top, right? So two times two is going to give us our new numerator. Two times two is four. So two thirds is going to be equivalent to four sixths. So if you've noticed from the past couple of problems, when I'm dealing with this one, when I'm multiplying by one, my numerator and denominator are the same, right? That's what makes one whole, is I've, if I've got two halves, that's one whole, right? So that's another way to check yourself, is make sure that inside that one, that you've got the same numerator and denominator, because that's what keeps these equivalent. All right. So from here on out, we have seven more problems that we're going to do together. So from here on out, make sure that we are pausing the video right here. Go ahead and work out the problem on your own. And then play it, check your work, see how you did, and then try it again on the next one. So we've got two fifths, and we're turning it into tenths. Two fifths, and we're turning it into tenths. Well, five times something got me 10, right? We know from math facts that five times two is equal to 10, right? So whatever I do to the bottom, I've got to do to the top to keep it equivalent. Whatever I did to my denominator, I have to always do the same thing to my numerator. So I'm gonna do two times two as well. Well, two times two, that's easy, is four. And so we get that two fifths is equivalent to four tenths four tenths awesome let's look at the next one all right we're dealing with a little bit bigger numbers now we got one fourth and we're turning it into twentieths so pause here to work it out on your own and then play it back when you're ready to go over your work so we got one fourth and it's becoming twentieths so four times what is going to get me 20, do you think? Well, I remember from math facts that if I do four, eight, 12, 16, 20, that's four times five, right? So four times five gets me 20, but whatever I did to my denominator, I have to do the same thing to my numerator to keep it equivalent. One times five, right? Because five fifths is one, multiplying by one doesn't change the value, it just changes the pieces, the number of pieces by multiplying by five fifths. So one times five is gonna give me my new numerator. One times five is five, and I end up with five twentieths as my new fraction that is equivalent to one fourth. On to the next one. We've got three tenths is equal to eightieths. 80 so we're turning three tenths into 80 Well, I'm going from 10 to 80, right? Well, 10 times what is going to get me 80? Well, if I skip count by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, that is 10 times eight, right? So 10 times eight is going to get me to 80. Whatever I did to my denominator, I've got to do the same thing to my numerator, so I'll do three times eight to keep it equivalent. Three times eight is 24. So three tenths would be equivalent to 24 eightieths. All right, only four more before we look at our assignment. 5 twelfths, and it's getting turned into 36. We're trying to find the equivalent fraction of 5 twelfths as 36. So remember, pause here, work it out, then play it back when you're ready to check your work. So 5 twelfths, and I'm turning it into 36. 
So 12 times something is going to turn it into 36, right? Well, we can think about our multiples of 12. 12 times 3 is going to get me 36, right? 12 times 3 is equal to 36. So I have to do the same thing to my 5 in my numerator. I'll do 5 times 3 to get my new numerator. Well, 5 times 3 is 15. So my equivalent fraction is 15 thirtieths. 5 twelfths is equal to 15 thirtieths. Only a couple more, y'all. 6 elevenths, and it's becoming 80 eighths. So 6 elevenths, and I'm trying to turn it into 80 eighths. So let's think about it. 11 times something is going to get me 88, right? 11 times what is 88? We know from math facts that 11 times 8 is 88, right? So I'll have to do 6 times 8 to get my new numerator. 6 times 8 is 48. So 48 is our new numerator, so our entire equivalent fraction is going to be 48 88ths is equal to 6 elevenths. All right, now we've got 6 sevenths, and I'm turning it into 80 fourths. 6 sevenths, and it's becoming 80 fourths. 7 times something is 84. What is that? Let's think about it. If we skip count by 7 till we get 84, if we look at a multiplication chart, if we do 84 divided by 7, we'll realize that 7 times 12 is 84. Well, whatever I do to my denominator, I've got to do to my numerator, right? Whatever it gets done to the bottom has to get done to the top. So we'll have to do 6 times 12 to get our new equivalent numerator. Well, 6 times 12, that is going to get me... 72. So 72 80 fourths is equivalent to 6 sevenths. All right, let's look at our last question together before we get started on our assignment. Now we've got 19 thirtieths, and I'm turning it into 90ths. Well, thirtieths isn't necessarily... A math fact number you're not going to find it on a multiplication chart not multiplying by right um but 30ths 30s counting by 30s is basically the same thing as counting by threes right except for you're just adding an extra zero so if i think about 30 counting by 30s till i get 90 i would go 30 60 90 that's 30 one two three times so 30 times three is 90 right so in order to keep my numerator equivalent, in order to find my equivalent fraction, whatever I did to the bottom, I've got to do the top. So I'll do 19 times 3 to get my new numerator. I don't know about y'all, but 19 times 3 is not a math fact, and it's not uh, knowledge that I just, you know, have on my head all the time, so I'm going to do the multiplication on the side. No harm in that. 19 times 3. 9 times 3 is 27. Carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 2 is 5. And we get 57. So 19 times 3 was 57, giving our equivalent fraction being 57 90ths is equivalent, is equal to 19 thirtieths. All right, y'all, so here's our assignment for today. We have a Google slide activity all about finding equivalent fractions, and it is done very similarly to how I was doing the problems in the video lesson. So here we have our first question where we have one-fourths, and we're turning it into eighths, right? So we're taking one-fourth, we're multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number, which would be right here, and we're going to get our answer. So let me go ahead and show you how this is going to work. So these yellow boxes are our text boxes, and that's where you're going to put your numbers in, right? So in order to turn four into eight, to turn four into eight, I know that I had to multiply by two, right? So I'll just type two. Well, remember, whatever you do to the bottom, so we multiply by 2, we have to do the top to keep it equivalent, right? So I'll do 1 times 2, so I'll type my 2 here, and 1 times 2 is equal to 
2. Easy enough. So I end up with a 1 fourth is equal to 2 eighths. And that's all that we're doing today. We do have quite a few problems. You have uh, about 20 questions because this does go really fast, right? This was a really easy question. A lot of these questions are going to be kind of more involving more mental math on questions that involve bigger numbers like our last one you might have to work it out on paper. So make sure that you have paper, pencil handy, so that way you're able to work out uh, some of these questions. But a lot of them are math facts. A lot of them are math facts questions. And a multiplication chart will be attached to this assignment, so that way it can help you on that as well. So we are just filling in our yellow boxes. Remember, this one is there to show you, to make you remember that when we're multiplying by two on top and bottom, we're basically multiplying by one, right? Because two, halves 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So it's, I'm not changing my value. 1 fourth is still 1 fourth. It is just broken up into smaller pieces to get our 2 eighths. And that is our assignment today. We're going to go over this in our second meeting of the day and go over any questions that you might have. So let me know if you need anything in the comments and I will see y'all soon. Have a great day guys. Bye.